smoky hot takes greatest coaching performances in Tennessee football history. I know what it is and I think it's pretty easy, but uh, let me get you to throw out some possibilities there. Mine has to do with a, a certain orange bowl, but not an orange bowl game. What do you think about that? That's a good one. So I got a few. Um, Johnny Majors basically going with the vertical receiver routes and just throwing it, introducing it during the 1982 Alabama game, introducing that concept, and that's how Tennessee upsets Alabama, changing the SEC. 1985, Johnny Majors, Miami. Former 98, Florida. I know there was a lot of luck, but they played that very well with T. Martin. 01, Florida. 04, Georgia. Heupel 2022, Alabama. I left out one because I know you're going here, but I haven't given my best one yet. I'm saving that. So I'll go with yours first, though. Okay. So I'm excluding a couple for different reasons. I thought 98 Florida, I don't think that was as much about best coaching performances as it was about better team. And I thought Florida made some mistakes in 98 Florida. 85 Miami. I want to go back. I think that was a Jimmy Johnson team that was way too cocky. Majors 82 out of Alabama. That's awesome, but a little bit before my time. And I know it's before your time, but college, uh, Caleb is super college football historian. So I'll, I'll depend on you for that one, but it is before my time. Um, 03 Miami to me is by far the greatest coaching performance in Tennessee football history that team was absolutely loaded and the next year what they came back to uh Tennessee and just just hammered it was one of no those it was a reverse they hammered Tennessee and Nayland first and then Tennessee came back to Miami the year after you're right my apologies and you it was one of those games that was what it ended up being about 20 points as a difference but you felt like it could be 100 if Miami wanted it to be and to be able to beat Miami down there, and you had the crazy end around with, was it Derek Tinsley, I believe? Derek Tinsley, yep. Um, that was the best coaching performance I've ever ten- seen Tennessee put together, period. End of discussion. They beat a way better team in Miami with a hostile crowd. Um, you know, you've got on the list, 04 Georgia. Tell me why. Well, 04 Georgia had a bit of. Oh- That was two freshman quarterbacks, Eric Gaines and Brent Schaefer. Tennessee had lost by 30 to Auburn the week before, I believe. They were going on the road to play Georgia. They had Georgia was on a four-game winning streak at the time, was a double-digit favorite to win that game. This was David Green's senior year. This was going to be the year Georgia gets over the hump and wins the national title, finally under Mark Rick. And Tennessee just marches in and beats them 19 to 14 in a I mean kind of a slugfest, but a very well-played game by Eric Gaines, who basically who started the whole game pretty much. And that was his first road game. And, I mean, I, that was a great game by Fulmer. But I actually agree with you. The 0-3 Miami was better. And what stood, stood out to me with 0-3 Miami was the total lack of respect John Chavis had for Brock Berlin's decision-making. And that, that was the – that was the funniest thing. Like, I will or, never forget that. Or Steve Spurrier's willingness to make it a running football game, right? Oh, I was talking about – no, I'm talking about the Miami game. Oh, the Miami game. Okay, um, sorry. I thought you were – you went back to 01 Florida. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The, no, the hit – because remember, Berlin had transferred to Miami and started against Tennessee in 03. Right. And John Chavis dialed up blitz packages that any quarterback that was a halfway good decision maker could have had a touchdown pass out of. I will never forget Miami's down 10-6. to 6, They're driving. And John Chavis sends Mark Jones bare on a blitz. It hits Brock Berlin. And ball pops in the air. Jabril Wilson intercepts it. I mean, if Brock Berlin, Kella Winslow, a, a, a man of great character, obviously, was wide open on the other side of the field because he dialed up that blitz. But Chavis was very convinced that Berlin would not be smart enough to see Winslow for a touchdown. And I give Chavis a ton of – he knew when to dial up blitzes that game and when to force the turnovers. And Tennessee basically played that game knowing that Miami is the most undisciplined team in football. So they were saying – we're going to play extremely conservative and just let Miami implode. And by golly, now, they did. I think a play that still to this day sticks out to me, this is how talented Miami was. They took all of their great receivers, and they were great, and they lined them up on the left side of the field in the last play of the first half, 
and they threw a Hail Mary to Kellen Winslow. And Kellen Winslow almost pulled that in. I believe it was over Antoine Stewart. Caleb. No, it was over Jason Allen. It was over Jason Allen. I thought Jason Allen was lined up on the other side. I remember Jason Allen knocking it away, though. Okay, but Winslow almost went over and caught the ball, and that would have been like the craziest Hail Mary because you didn't throw it to the group of dudes on one side. You threw it to a tight end on the other side. So whoever broke it up, whether or not it was Jason Allen or Antoine Stewart, they, it was all they could do to break it up. That team was absolutely loaded, and I thought that just the willingness to throw it to a tight end all by himself on one side told you how loaded they were. That was the greatest coaching performance in my mind, especially in an underdog role that Philip Fulmer had. Um, they didn't have any business being on the field with that Miami football team. No, they didn't. They didn't. And they had barely, remember they had a really ugly win against Duke the week before and everybody was in Kelly Winslow, Miami had just choked away a game to Virginia Tech, and Keller Winslow says we're ticked off. It's unfortunate for them. And, I mean, they were, it was. I would never forget Clawson in an interview before the game because Casey Clawson had the worst stat line for a winning quarterback I think I've ever seen. It was like 11 of 18 for 81 yards. But in an interview before the game, he said, they were like, what do you need to do to win? He's like, the next thing we got to do is just not make mistakes. Basically saying we know Miami is going to implode because they were so undisciplined that year. And I would never forget Vince Wolford reaching out to sack Casey Clawson and accidentally grabbing his face mask and bringing him down. Remember that play, Dave? Yep, I do. <laughs> and, Will, <laughs> and it was an easy sack, honestly. And Wilford just reached out and grabbed his face mask and gave Tennessee a 15-yarder. There was the roughing the punter. Sean Taylor, rest in peace, trying to field that amazing punt by Dustin Colquitt. I don't know why he tried to field that punt. Just let it bounce out of bounds. That win in the one. Yeah, that's right. Um, no, that, that, that to me was – one of the most surprising games as far as an outcome for Tennessee or against Tennessee that I've, I've ever seen. And I was stunned that they absolutely won that game and were able to pull it off. Um, and I, I thought it was in a lot of ways because of what happened two years later in 2005, I thought it was kind of one of Philip Vollmer's last great hurrahs and one of his greatest hurrahs as a coach, period. I mean, Philip Fulmer, let's basic, was was basically a coach that beat the teams, for the most part, Tennessee was supposed to beat and would surprise you every once in a while. That was one of those really incredible surprises, right? Absolutely. Question that came to my mind, though. What if the, there's one, I think, the Fulmer's that competes. His The game that made him a household name and, all, and forced Johnny Majors out. Not Florida in 92, because Florida, that was a, that was because of the crazy monsoon that happened. We all know that. But the week before that Georgia game, Heath Shuler's breakout game, when Tennessee beat Georgia on the road 34-31, to 31, that was Fulmer just <clears> – because <throat> Ray Golf, I mean, Georgia was better. They just had Ray Golf as coach. And Philip Fulmer willed Tennessee to a win with his coaching in that game, didn't he? Um. Yeah, I mean that that has to rank right up there the the Heath Schuler game. The, the the other you know the one that I wouldn't have said before the Celebrate 98 series is you and I've talked about it I think off the air is what Philip Fulmer did before the national championship game. Now Tennessee was I believe 10 points better than Florida State, correct? Um yes. I I, I don't think that was close. I think Florida State was actually the favorite, but they shouldn't have been. And I think that Philip Fulmer didn't get credit enough for leading up to that game, how he didn't have any of his players talk to Florida State's players in the bowl festivities they have before until the last night. And he said, gag orders off, talk all you want. And but Tennessee scared Florida State on that night, that last bowl event, <laughs> which was essentially two nights before the game, the Thursday before the game. They had a, it was a, some waterworks thing. Uh, so, and then Philip Fulmer told a joke at halftime of the national championship game because he thought his team was tight. So even though that was a better team that I believe they played, Philip Fulmer, what I've learned from the Celebrate 98 series, deserves a little bit more credit for that coaching acumen that he showed off uh, in the national championship game. I thought it was pretty smart not to have his guys talk to the last night. Oh, that was that's a yes, I agree. I don't know if that's I, I don't know if I consider that a coaching job from an X's and O's perspective, though. That was just amazing gamesmanship. 
amazing gamesmanship yeah. that he showed. Um, yeah. Dave's going whatever, to lose Whatever it. you call it, it, it's that, you know? Yeah. Dave, you're going to lose your mind on this. Your head's going to explode when I say this. But up until the 13 men on the field play against LSU, up until that play. There were if, just 13, by the way. Go ahead. Yeah, there was just 13. If Tennessee beats LSU, that Derek Dooley coaching game would have been one of the best coaching games you ever saw, given oh, how right. outmatched Tennessee was. And that game. I agree. And then the James Banks Tennessee Georgia game. What year was that? Oh, two Georgia. Yeah, that 0-2. was that was a loss, but it should be up there. They shouldn't have been on the field with them. Yep, they shouldn't have. That's a I good agree. One. Derek Dooley is a, a very. I mean, you have to give him credit. They shouldn't have been on the field with LSU. That would have changed the direction because that that's the type of win on the road that gives you another year in and of itself. Unless Miles would have been fired the next week, by the way. That that saved Les Miles' job, I think. I think he would have been fired the next week. And I mean, he was Les, Les Miles was the prime example of a coach winning a national championship. And you're like, how does that guy have a national championship read? <laughs> Smoky hot takes brought to you in part by Bassy Lawn and Garden Man Alive. It's worth the drive right there in Cleveland, Toro, count on it. And City Heating and Air Conditioning and CityHeatandAir.com. Integrity matters. With that unit, you might need a not might not need a whole new unit. City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. And we thank our friends Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and on. I don't have any issues with my vision because of Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han. They're awesome. It is Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han. They did my LASIK. They should do yours. 